So today I'm going to show you how to take the already stunning looking Fantex MV5 case and make it a little bit more special for not a lot of money. Stick around to find out how. Hello all and welcome back again. First things first, if you're not a fan of seeing brand new cases being butchered, you might want to switch this off right now. Otherwise, stick around and I'm going to show you exactly what I've done to uh, get this little feature added to my case. As you've guessed it, it's a sensor panel um, that I've added to my case. This case has got a gap that's absolutely perfect for putting a sensor panel in, but you'll see that as the video goes on. So, first things first, I'll show you an unboxing and I'll show you exactly what I've done to get this installed. And then at the end you'll see the final results and we'll have a little chat about it. Enjoy! I'll show you the AliExpress website first where I bought this from and it would cost me £28.77 at the time of recording, 72% discount, 5 day delivery which also includes free shipping. Pictures over here show you the contents of the box, black one and of course a white one which I went for. I'll leave a link for this in the description but if we scroll down it gives you the details, 8.8 .8 inch screen, 480 by 1920 resolution. And a little bit further down, it gives you the size of the case, the size of the screw holes at the back as well, in case you want to mount this off the fans or something inside the case. Then down here we have some templates you can download, which is good of them, and you're going to need the Ada 64 software for this, so just bear that in mind. But yeah, a couple of templates that we can use, but I'll, I'll talk about that later on. There's some reviews down the bottom here, 4.7 out of 5 stars. Back up the top, you can see there's over a thousand of these sold, so very, very popular screens. £28.77 again for the black, and just beware, the white one costs £35.23. So now on to the unboxing. Pretty unbranded box, no logos or anything on it. Inside we have, I believe is the mini USB, or sorry, mini HDMI cable to standard HDMI, which it is, yep, that's a mini HDMI end, little protective covers on it which is nice to see and a standard HDMI connection again with a nice little protective cover on it It's about a metre long without measuring it, roughly a metre I'd say Let's put this to the side and we'll see what else there is So we've also got the power cable Just untie this and we'll have a look at that So at one end we have a USB type A connection or plug and then at the other, we should have a micro USB connection. Yep, we do. And then line, we have a power switch for turning the screen on and off. And again, this cable is roughly a metre long. I'm actually going to use a different cable for powering up the screen, and I'll talk about that later. We've also got a little stand that comes in the packaging, in case you want to mount this outside the case. That may be an option for you. You might not have the Fantex. Might have not have any room for the screen inside, but you can actually mount it outside or sit it on this stand. Then inside, now that's the last thing that's in the box, is the screen itself. Nothing else underneath. Screens in bubble wrap to protect it, which is good. There's a little film on the screen to protect it as well. And it's a metallic body. Feels quite nice build. Nice and so solid. We've got screw holes at the back here in case you want to mount it off of something else, like your fans or something. Nothing on that side. And round this side we have the mini USB power connection and the mini HDMI input connection. So along the top it's 236 millimeters, or sorry, 236.5 millimeters, it's 68 millimeters in height, and then in depth it's 18.7 millimeters. Perfect size for this case, and you'll see how perfect it is. So basically the screen is going to go in here between the glass and the PSU shroud. Just roughly around about there. So what I'd done first was I measured exactly where I was going to cut the back of the case out. I'd done that by measuring the basically the, the height to where the connections are on the screen. Making sure that I didn't fill the the shroud, the PSU shroud. So the slot only needs to be deep enough so that you can see the connections. So if I hold the screen in place here, you can kind of roughly see where I need to cut the case out. I just used a 
little ruler just to measure the height and then obviously the depth as well before it touches the, the PSU shroud but yeah this is where the screen basically needs to go so the first thing I done was using a drill I just actually drilled along the, the whole uh, sorry drilled along the lines that I marked out it just makes it a little bit easier for when I actually come to cutting them out so I'll do that, continue all the way around the lines and then I'll finish it off with this rotary tool and I've got a little little cutting discs, metallic cutting discs for that job. So that's it cut out just now. The edges are a wee bit rough and I don't really want the, the cable snagging on these or, or wearing down and causing a short. So I'll use again a little stone to, to dress these up and clean them up and then I'll maybe put some radiator paint on or something just to tidy it all up. But you should be able to see now that I've got this cut out a clear view through to the connections and that's exactly what I'm looking for. If I can get the right angle, yep, so there you go. You can see right through to the, the power connection and the HDMI and if I just push it right up to the side here you'll see that they're, they're clear, they're, they won't foul the cut out. And here's how it looks now with those cables connected and the screen roughly in position where I want it to be. But you can see that the, the cables are nice and clear. There's no, no issue connecting them up. All looking good. Now with the side panel on. And you're beginning to see how good it looks. You can't see any cables coming out the other side. If you were to turn the screen the other way inside the case. Or going over the top of the PSU shroud. So it would be simply a case of plugging one end into your graphics card HDMI connection and the other end would go to a USB connection on the back of your motherboard but for me I'm going to use a different cable which is going to basically go through this little grommet and tie into an NZXT hub that I will be putting inside the case. And just to show you that the, there's no pressure on the screen you can still move this. It's a very very well I would almost say perfect fit for it but the screen isn't under any pressure, it's not crushing it or anything like that, it's still free to move, albeit it is tight, but not so tight that it's putting any pressure on the screen, risking any damage to it, but I thought I'd just show you that bit. So after everything's installed, including the software, this is the result you can have, and look at that, is that not just unbelievable looking? CPU temps, graphics card temps, pump speeds, fan speeds, everything you can think of you'd want monitored and it's all customizable. You can do, do whatever you want to suit yourself but it just makes this case that a little bit more special and stand out amongst a lot of other cases. Beautiful little mod, I'm sure you'll agree. And there you go, there's not a lot to it really if you've got the tools, that's, that's probably the hardest bit is actually getting the tools together but as you can see from my video, that gap between the glass and the, PS, the PSU shroud in the, this case is absolutely superb for getting this little screen in and it's it's probably just a bit of luck at the screen's the exact size to get in there. Just to point out, there's one bit in the video um, I was talking about the, the USB cable that comes with it, plugs into the back of your PC. Now, my PC is chock-a-block full of all sorts of different things connected to it and I've actually run out of USB connections in the back. I could have a hub plugged into the back or somewhere else, but I decided to just uh, use a an NZXT internal hub, um, which allows you to plug another four internal USB cables in. But that's another thing you may have to buy. Um, and we've got we've got one here that came in a two pack. Sorry about the noise, two pack. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's it's just a typical micro USB connection to this end with your internal. USB connection there and it just keeps everything a little, a little bit more cleaner for me anyway um, but yeah I thought I'd just show you the cable that I bought um, so earlier on I says I would leave a link to the Dali Express website where you can buy this thing and I'll also leave a link to um, where you can download the templates for the, the screen um, and that, that's exactly where I got one of my templates from um, I'm not going to go into details of how you set up the control panel thing, uh, or sorry, the sensor panel through ADA64. I've already done that in a previous video, and you'll, um, I'll, I'll leave a, a little link to that up, up in the corner here. Um, it's pretty simple. If you want to do it all from scratch yourself, or as I say there, 
go to the Ada 64 forums, you can nick a template and then you can kind of tweak it to suit yourself. But um, yeah, hope you enjoyed this one. I'm pretty sure uh, there'll be other people who's wanted to see this video want to give it a go. Might as well for the price, it's, it's, it's a cracking little upgrade to your case. Um, yeah, and I hope you enjoyed it. As always guys, leave a like and subscribe if you can and I'll see you again soon. See you later.